What up YouTube, TK here, and today we are back with the Razer E300 electric scooter. Now you may have seen from one of my previous videos, I used Ryobi 18 volt drill batteries to make this thing quicker. That was a lot of fun, but it's not good enough. Today we're gonna implement a proper battery upgrade for this thing. Now today I have two five cell, eight amp hour LiPo batteries from Hobby King, and I have a battery management system from eBay. This will take care of charging and balancing the cells. First things first, let's find out how this is all gonna fit. All we need now is a way to hold the batteries in place in the scooter without letting them rattle around too much. And I think I have the perfect solution. Foam! A $3 pool noodle will always do the trick. So the trick is to take your pool noodle, line it up, grab your favorite knife, or if you're doing this on a TK budget, whatever knife you can find, and go ahead and, you know, hack away. Oh, this is gonna work so good. The trick is to cut these sections bigger than you actually need. Then you can compress the foam and it'll jam itself in there and hold in place. Oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect. Next part of the trick is cutting out slots for the batteries in the foam. This is gonna be a little bit harder, but we'll figure it out. A little incision. Be very careful not to pierce the batteries with your knife. That would just be a massive mistake. You would not believe how bad that would be. You'll probably set fire to your house. Make sure, again, that you leave more foam so that when you put the batteries in, they have to compress the foam and everything holds itself in place. Pool noodles are cheap and rather large, so if you mess up, you can always go again. May have to cut that down a little further. They're yeah, starting to fit in real good. Look at that, tight as anything, nice and sturdy. I might just gouge it out a little more to drop them down so I can put some foam on top, but uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Next job is to wire them to the battery management system. Now then, we have our batteries here, we have our battery management system, and we have the diagram of how it all works on the monitor there. Now, for those of you that are wondering what this battery management system is and why it's necessary, lithium batteries are great. They're lightweight, they've got a high power density, they're excellent. However, they are sensitive to various things. One of those being that if you have the different cells in your lithium pack, now we've got 10 cells. If you have different cells in your lithium pack at different voltages, you can get problems. Things will explode. So the battery management system's job is to monitor all those cells and make sure all of them are relatively evenly charged down to about 0.01 volts. And that way our pack will work nicely. This will also actually handle charging the pack as well, which is cool. So we don't have to plug into an external battery charger. We just feed the, uh, feed the thing 12 volts when we want to charge it. And this little magical board will handle the rest. So all we've got to do is connect these wires up to the 10 cells, connect the negative of the battery to the pack. And yeah, pretty much G to G. That means good to go. If you've ever wondered what these kooky connectors on lithium batteries are, these are the balance connectors as they're known. They allow you to connect to each of the individual cells in the pack to monitor the voltages. So that is what we're going to connect to our battery management system. Now we do want to do a neat job of this and not have all these balance leads short out on each other. So we're going to use some heat shrink because the last thing you want when you're building a electric scooter is to have it catching fire under your feet while you're tearing down the road at 40 k's an hour. And believe me, I've had my share of problems over the years. Now to make this job easy, we're gonna use these little standard headers because they fit nicely into the balance connectors on the battery so we don't have to chop all those off and it keeps things versatile. So I've just invented this little jig. We've got some blue tack here, although it is pink. We've got a female header here. Pop that into the blue tack and pop our header we wanna solder into there and it holds it up nice and straight for us, makes it easy to solder. I gotta say, rainbow cable is one of my favorite things out of the 80s. We've got those soldered, it's a bit rough and ready, but it'll do. We'll solder the main negative discharge wire where we're indicated to do so. We'll try and we'll fail. It can be tough working with things like this in these sort of high current applications. Everything has a big fat trace or a big fat wire and that means everything's acting as a heat sink. So it can be very difficult and you need a very good soldering iron with lots of power to actually get it done. More often than not, you burn yourself. 
Okay, we've got the charge wire hooked up to the board. We've got the negative discharge wire hooked up to the board. All we've got to do now is connect the batteries and see how it all fits in the scooter. And we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to use these. These are XT90 connectors from Hobby King. And these are the special ones that actually prevent a big inrush of current when you plug it in, which stops it sparking and arcing and ruining the contacts when you plug the battery in hot. So these should be good. So there is something a bit annoying about these connectors. They have this little thing on the back here that comes with the connector, which you're supposed to be able to slide on after soldering to basically enable you to assemble a connector without having to use any heat shrink. But the problem is unless you're like, you know, the, the neatest little perfect godly solderer in the whole wide world, you are never ever going to assemble this connector. Maybe it is my fault for trying to use these connectors with eight gauge wire, but God damn, you know, like what connectors am I supposed to put on these buggery things? <sighs> Tell you what, YouTube, tell you what. I might just douse this in epoxy to, you know, bodge it because that is not going on. So I'm making an absolute dog's breakfast of these XT90 connectors. The problem I have is that by the time I get it hot enough for the solder to melt, the plastic around the contact melts and the whole connector is ruined. So if you have any tips on how to solder these better, please let me know because, yeah, this is an absolute dog's breakfast. It looks like shit and I'm not proud of it. Right, we've got everything soldered up. We've got the battery management system here and the batteries. We've got our foam cut in the body of the scooter. So now it's about time to integrate everything together and see if it catches fire. Let's see how we go. A bit scared, Teebs. Oh. All right, let's get them wedged in. Oh, beauty. That's worked a bloody treat. I oh, got that, yep. Oh, that's, those are in there nice and tight. It's what we want out of a battery. Um, oh, I forgot to connect those together, but that's all right. We'll blow things up later. Um, need to put some kind of insulation on the back of, or indeed completely around the battery management system. I'll just do that quickly. Will I be careful? I'll try and be careful. I hope this doesn't blow up because my face is sitting right above it and I rather quite like my face. I've always been a fan of it. To an extent, the more electrical tape you use, the safer you're being, so don't sweat it. If I sound nervous, it's because there's a lot to hook up, and generally, no matter what you're hooking up, you always hook it up wrong the first time. And the problem is, if you hook something like this up wrong, again, death is promised to you. Um, probably last time I ever used an XT90 connector, I absolutely hated working with those. We're going to make the final power connection. Oh god, I'm... I'm not keen, I don't want to modify scooters anymore. Um, we're going to make the final power connection and hope everything doesn't blow up. <sighs> Nothing smells good. Okay, that was not... I'm just waiting for something to start smoking, you know? God, this is bloody scary. Alright, I'm just going to turn it on. No, it doesn't work, it's broken. Something's wrong. That's not good. Okay, it doesn't work. For some reason. Why is that? Is that hot? Is anything hot? Nothing's hot. Um... Something does smell burny though. I may have been overly nervous. I think I disconnected the lead that lights up the switch. Uh, the, the on switch. So we're just gonna try and switch things on again because we haven't had any smoke. We're just gonna... Yeah, it works. It works. That's awesome. The scooter works. Um, nothing's on fire. Holy crap. We've done it. We've done it. We've re-engined the Razor E300. Hell yeah. We've just got a couple more things to do before we actually take it out for a ride. We're going to check the charging system works. And we're just going to put some foam on top of here. And maybe some around here to keep the batteries extra safe. Because safety's cool. Safety's not cool. Um, yeah. I did make a dumb mistake. For some reason I thought the battery management system was capable of charging the batteries off 12 volts, which was completely ridiculous and untrue. So I have had to get a charger. This is a 42 volt battery charger for e-bikes and so on and so forth. So that'll charge up our nice 10 cell battery. We're just gonna jump in. It's been on for a little while now. Check the voltages and make sure everything's balanced and nice and ready to go. Okay, so I've had a look at the individual cell voltages on one of the packs. 
It's not bad. Some of the cells are sitting at 3.9, some are sitting at 3.97. That's not really very well balanced. However, my multimeter isn't really particularly accurate. It's just a $20 bug and been special. Um, and to be honest, I just really want to try this thing out. So we're going to trust that it all works. All right, it's the moment of truth. We have everything bolted up. We have 10 cells of lithium power. We're on. Wish me luck. Oh, it's, it's not working. It's dead. That was a real anticlimax. Um, it's broken. Oh, I think I know what's happening. It's current limiting. So, what I think is happening at the moment is the battery management system is actually shutting down because it's limited to something like 30 amps. I think on a takeoff, the motor actually draws more than that. So, that's really incredibly annoying because I got no time for that. We will have to do a quick mod. I think the BMS is current limiting. When I'm on the scooter, to get moving, it requires a huge amount of current. The BMS, I think, is limited to something like 30 amps. So it'll cut out and then you have to power off and repower to try again, but it'll just current limit straight away. However, if I lift the rear wheel and just try and run the scooter, it runs fine because that takes a lot less current than it does to move the entire scooter with me on it. So we're gonna take the BMS out, unwrap it, see if we can disable the current limit just like we did with the original speed controller. I've also left the scooter on charge for a good 24 hours. We'll just quickly check as well to see if the BMS has actually balanced the cells. I'm a bit sus on that. Another thing is I have got to stop soldering to headers to plug into lithium battery balance connectors because headers, as soon as you solder them like this, the pins will freely move in and out of the header. And it's just real dangerous when you're talking about lithium batteries here. Now, when we talk about current limiting, we look for a current shunt. We very obviously have one right here, this link. The way a current shunt works is you have a link of known resistance and you can measure the voltage drop across it. You can then calculate the current using Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. Bam. So to disable the current limit on the speed controller for this scooter, which you saw in my previous video, what I did was I basically cut the trace going from the microcontroller that went to the current shunt to measure the voltage drop. Uh, shouldn't be too hard to do here, but it may be. Uh, we'll try and figure it out. Okay, what is tough is I'm actually struggling to see any actual intelligence here. I can't see a microcontroller at all. I just see a bunch of transistors and so on. I'm kind of in a hurry and also I want my scooter to work and I don't want to break the BMS either so I may go with an alternative strategy this time. What you can do is you can trick your current measuring circuit. You see this link is a known resistance. That's how the current is calculated. So if we lower the resistance of this link that will uncalibrate. That's a good word. It'll. So if we lower the resistance of this link, that will uncalibrate the current measurement. So say we halve the resistance of this link, which we can do easily by doubling it up in size, then it will think it's measuring half the current. It's a sneaky way of doing things. I don't really want to do it that way. I want to disable the current limit entirely, but I'm short on time and I'm really struggling to figure this out. It wouldn't be so hard if this wasn't a white PCB. It makes it incredibly difficult to see the traces. Long story short, I couldn't figure out how to disable the current sense, so instead I am trying to uncalibrate it. I have reduced the resistance of the current shunt by soldering in a big fat piece of stranded wire in parallel. Hopefully that's enough to increase the current limit to a point where basically the scooter stays under it and we're fine. Let's hook it up and find out. All right, it is a cold and miserable Melbourne Tuesday. It is raining and I have the razor with me. I'm hoping this little hack on the current shunt has done enough. Let's find out. Please, for the love of God. Oh, dear. Uh oh That's bad. That's not good. Damn it. Oh, God damn. That was a disaster.
So what happened there is you see when a basic brush DC motor controller fails, well, it, it fails open circuit. So you can go really fast in a direction you don't want to go. What's more, there's no kill switch accessible when you're on the scooter, so I had to lift up the entire thing to actually switch it off. Oh, actually, I don't know why I didn't just put it on the ground. That would have made more sense. Oh, well, I'll learn that for next time. Damn it, this is really bad. Once again, I find myself sitting on the driveway in dismay. What's good? I think we beat the current limit on the battery management system. What's bad is it looks like the speed controller has blown up. It appears that the main FET has gone open circuit, you know, it's burned up, it's, it's gone. And, I mean, you saw how dangerous that was. It's not entirely unexpected. These batteries that we've put in are much more powerful than the drill batteries from the Ryobi drill. So they're going to deliver a lot more current, probably blow up the speed controller a lot more easily. I should have actually uh, taken the taken the lid off really quickly and seen if the motor controller was hot, but I was kind of uh, in a bit of a situation. But yeah, we'll disassemble it, have a look at what's gone wrong and make a plan, but I think I'm going to be waiting a couple of weeks for parts to actually get this thing going again. Absolute tragedy because I was so keen to have this thing moving. Okay, we've got this thing back on the lab floor. Let's open it up and check for damage, I guess. I'm pretty sure it's the speed controller that's gone because you see if the battery management system failed nothing would happen if the speed controller fails the motor goes hard on 100 all the time that's what we're seeing so unfortunately i think that's what's gone the speed controller did hold up fine when we used it with the ryobi lithiums however these are capable of delivering so much more current that i think uh the poor thing just couldn't hold up but we'll dig it out and do an inspection all right, here's the speed controller. We'll go ahead and unbolt the heat sink. Doesn't actually look too bad, so I'm getting a bit sus. Doesn't look burnt at all. Um, doesn't smell too bad. I think I'm gonna have to desolder the FET and see if it's dead. So today on TK's Transistor Tester, we have the IRFB3607, which is the power MOSFET from the scooter's speed controller. Now, the reason we're looking at a power MOSFET, which we've ripped out of the board, is because typically in a brushed DC motor controller, when the MOSFET fails, it fails short circuit, sending full battery voltage to the motor and throwing you off your nice little scooter. That is what happened today, so we're looking at the power MOSFET. So we have a lead connected to the gate in yellow, we have a LED connected to drain, and we have the source connected to negative. We can see straight away the LED is hard on and doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if I touch gate to ground or to voltage, that FET is absolutely short circuit. Real tragedy. So we have two possibilities now that this FET is blown. We can get a new speed controller, with a twisty throttle and one that's rated for this current and that could work. Or we could do something a little hackier because I don't really feel like waiting a whole bunch of weeks for some $70 speed controller from eBay that could blow up anyway. Instead, we're gonna try and fix this ourselves. We're gonna go out and we're gonna buy even better FETs, even sexier ones. They'll have more current capability, they'll be magic and probably glow in the dark. And, you know, put those into this speed controller and see if we can make this speed controller deal with the current. I think that'll be more fun and also it means I don't have to wait three weeks for a new speed controller from eBay. So I think that's what we're going to do. For now, I'm actually going to go to bed. But if you've got any ideas, you know, should I just buy another speed controller? Should I use an IGBT in this same circuit? Should I use a particular FET? Let me know. Throw it in the comments because I want this scooter to work. Because I've been waiting six months to drive this thing at a million miles an hour down my street. And I'm sick of it sitting in the garage waiting for parts. Let me know. Till next time, thanks for watching. TK out.